At August 6, 2009, the launch of the course Enrich Your Life Through Practice of Nonviolence took place at GVB London. Samanijis Prasanna Pragya and Rohit Pragya know about it ever since they had opted for a life as nuns. To make the launch a memorable celebration, many volunteers had given their valuable time for planning the function, preparing refreshments and how to make the invitees feel a part of it. The audience consisted of multi-ethnic people following different faiths. When they began to rush in, they all immediately felt at home in the open atmosphere, signalizing that all are invited to participate in the eight weeks course and imparting the assurance that it would unite them in the aim to realize the valuable principle in day-to-day -day life. The start of the launch was the movie Beacon of Hope. Chairman of Jain Vishwa Bharati, Sri Bhagavad Jimalu, Vinod Bhai Kapasi, distinguished guests, brothers and sisters. We have heard from our eminent speakers about the actual meaning and importance of ahimsa, that is non-violence. Now, I would like to attract your attention towards the objective of today's event. You will have noticed from the first half of the title of the course that we are launching today refers to enriching our life. You will appreciate that here, today, we are not talking about enrichment by accumulation of wealth and material possessions. From the cradle to the grave, human beings are conditioned to live in a worldly life and in material world. Now, with globalization, we are told that only the fittest will survive. But what kind of fitness is meant or implied here? It definitely refers to entrepreneurs who run businesses and exploit all the possible means to maximize their profits. It refers to brilliant lawyers and skilled accountants. It also refers to skilled surgeons and researchers who can, event, who can invent new products. This is a different kind of fitness, which definitely does not refer to the wholesome mental and emotional fitness of human beings. It certainly does not refer to His Holiness Pope Benedict the 16th Interfaith Dialogues or Dalai Lama's Compassionate Buddhism or Nelson Mandela's Spirit of Forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, recently we have seen a kind of economic disaster and that world have, has been overwhelmed, maybe not experienced since the time of the Great Depression. Today, there is hardly any sector of business which has not been affected. Workers have lost their livelihoods, families have lost their homes. Those who are in employment live in a perpetual fear of losing their jobs. Their insecurity has increased. Two countries the list as a result of the pro great global credit crunch were India and China. Why? I'm not an economist or a politician, but I believe that there was far less greed and relatively less reliance on material 
materialistic life in these two countries. However, this does not mean that violence is confined to developed countries and the people who are in developing countries do not need training in non-violence. The whole world is today dominated by wealth and desire. The balance between four pursuits, dharma, artha, kama and moksha has been upset in all the four corners of the world. Late Ajayi Tusi formulated, had formulated a code of moral conduct as the part of unearth movement to tackle these deficiencies. Similarly, the German philosopher Kant and others have talked about moral rearmament. Acharya Mahaprabhu. He studied these problems at great depth and concluded that only by the training of non-violence, mankind will be able to reclaim the lost ground. He thus gave a concrete shape to his plan of training in non-violence and developed a globally acceptable course model which is being followed in hundreds of training in no, hundreds of non-violence training centers across India. At a practical level, these training centers have produced positive results. The main objective of this course is to develop a balanced human being who combines both a scientific outlook on life and a deep spiritual insight. Brothers and sisters, violence and non-violence both lie in our consciousness. The left side of our brain which stores the emotions of anger, hatred and violence is more active today because we are always, we are always surrounded directly or indirectly by violence. The right side of our brain which stores eternal values like non-violence, tolerance, forgiveness, compassion, etc. remains inactive. Our primary aim in this course on non-violence is therefore to redress the imbalance to the practical exercises of meditation and contemplation. By the practice of these exercises, we will be activating our right side of brain and that will result in turning away from negative emotions, destructive impulses, fears and desire for domination or revenge. Let me therefore conclude by quoting the French pacifist Roman Roland, the sages who discovered the law of non-violence in the midst of violence were greater geniuses than Newton, greater warriors than Wellington. Non-violence is the law of our species as Violence is the law of the brute. Thank you very much for your kind attention.